Hello, welcome to Coffee Break with Microchip Technology. Coffee Break is our ongoing forum in which we discuss new and evolving technology all in about the amount of time it takes to drink a cup of coffee. I'm your host, Eric Glattfelter. Joining us in the studio today is our moderator, Aliyah Fahoot. Aliyah, welcome. Thank you, Eric. Glad to be here. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We are currently live on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And you can participate in today's episode by leaving your questions and comments in the chat. Or you can email us at livestream at microchip.com after the broadcast. And don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe to our social media platforms. Back to you, Eric. Thanks, Leah. Joining us today for our topic, adding Bluetooth to your application, no coding or RF required. That sounds interesting. Joining us today is Shashir Malav, Product Marketing Manager here at Microchip. Shashir, welcome to Coffee Break. Thank you. Really glad to be here. All right, so to our topic, we're going to be talking about Bluetooth, but before we get into that, let's back up a little bit and just think about all, with all of the wi wireless protocols that a design engineer might have to choose from, why would you pick Bluetooth? What's, what's the sweet spot for Bluetooth? Absolutely, yeah. Um, Bluetooth is one of the most common wireless protocols out there. You know, if you look around ourselves, all the smartphones, laptops, TVs, everything has Bluetooth in it. And, uh, it's been around a long time, so there's that maturity uh, yep. that comes with development. Um, so, you know, it's one of those that fits the bill for most applications, especially consumer-facing products, home automation, and uh, applications like that. Right. Now, um, you mentioned that it's been around a while, so it's, it's stable, it's mature, there's a, there's a lot of uh, an ecosystem around Bluetooth? Absolutely. Like you said, um, uh, because of its lifetime, yep. a lot of features have been developed. Uh, it's become lower power than before, uh, has more range and so many improvements over the years, but yeah. Okay, okay, so if you're a design engineer and you're designing a new system and you want to put Bluetooth in there, what are the typical design challenges uh, that you would face or the considerations that you would need to think about? Absolutely, um, so we have identified three major hurdles, I think, in um, development for any wireless protocol and uh, Bluetooth as well, so I think RF design in itself is really big. Uh, the certifications that you need for the RF mm -hmm. is the second big hurdle that uh, a designer or the company will have to face. And then the firmware or the software development that goes with developing the end product um, is really difficult. So let's go in a little bit more detail. Yeah. When it comes to RF design, you know, you need to know, you need to have that expertise uh, because it is a critical hardware element. If right. you get that wrong, right. there's no <laughs> software update to fix right. that. You, know, you have to redesign, it takes a lot of time and money that way. And you need that testing equipment. You need okay. to design it in an efficient way. And that's one of the biggest challenges. With RF design comes certification. Every region has their own certification requirements. So depending on where you're trying to sell it, you know, you'll have to go through the process, which will take time, which you could be selling your product, yep. um, and then also money. So okay. you would have to spend tens of thousands of dollars depending on all the locations you're selling into. Okay. And then the final one is the firmware or the software development. If you've never done uh, any wireless development or Bluetooth development in particular, it's difficult to know the profiles to know the uh, all the protocol updates that have happened over the years and what needs to be built sure. uh, to develop a final you know product sure. so uh, overall you know it can be really challenging if you don't have the right expertise yes it sounds very complicated and, com and complex so at microchip we like to talk a lot about you know helping customers um, reduce their time to market and reduce their risk so what are what are we doing? How does this how does this module help uh, customers with those design challenges? Like you said, uh, Microsoft uh, Microchip <laughs> Wireless philosophy is to remove any and all the hurdles that mm -hmm. are there. So, with that in mind, we have removed the RF, uh, the certification, and the programming needs okay. with this module RNBD four five one, which is a, a a small form factor module that is RF ready, certified, and you don't need any um, sort of programming at all. Right. So it's, uh, it's a module with a PCB antenna, meaning if you have your circuit board ready, you can just put it on, solder it, 
And as far as RF is concerned, you have no development there on the hardware side. Then the certification. We have certified this module in the US, Canada, Europe, China, Japan, Korea, and Taiwan. So we are covering a large yep. area that way. So you could sell it day one. You don't have to wait and spend tens of thousands of dollars, <laughs> right? And then the most uh, sort of on the software side is the development itself. So uh, the way this works is you just send messages to the RNBD module. And what I mean by that is if you have a host uh, MCU or a host PC, all you're doing is sending simple ASCII messages or English messages where it's like send a text like why and it does some configurations for you. So okay. I'll, I'll give you a couple examples. Say if you wanted to go into sleep mode, if you're not using Bluetooth, if you want to save some power, all you'll do is send one alphabet and it puts the device into sleep mode, saves all the configurations in the back end. So you're not worrying about any of that. You just tell it by a single message. And you might think that because it's such a simple interface, maybe it doesn't do all the complicated advanced Bluetooth stuff. But uh, let me tell you uh, <laughs> how it can do multi-link, for example. Okay. So it can connect to six different Bluetooth devices simultaneously. You don't have to switch between one or the other. They yep. maintain solid connection, and you can either communicate with them individually or all at once, or depending on the application. But the point is, it's like you have all the advanced Bluetooth 5.2 profiles embedded in this firmware, and all you do is send simple messages, and okay. that's how you control it. Okay, so it sounds like there's a, a pretty complete set of configuration options. Uh, you don't have to use all of them. You can just kind of pick and choose the one if you have a simpler application. That's exactly right. Okay. If all you want is just a device to, uh, to be able to connect to your smartphone or anything else via Bluetooth, you can just add that couple uh, messages and right. you're done. Off you go. If you want <laughs> more advanced stuff, we support all of those as well. Okay. Great. So um, that sounds that sounds very powerful, but also uh, easy to use. So, do we have a, a development system that uh, design engineers can use to to work through this? Sure, we do. Um, so we've developed this uh, add-on board uh, for our NBD four five one module, and it's based on a very sort of common standard called Microbus. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So what, what that means is if you have a host MCU board which has Microbus headers on it, all you have to do is put it on. As soon as you power it on, it's ready. The Bluetooth's ready to be powered. There's no setup required. Literally, as soon as you power on, there's Bluetooth availability. Um, and the same goes with the PC. You can connect it directly to a PC via USB cable. Yep. Power it on, you're ready to connect. Okay. As simple as that. Okay, sounds good. And these are available today? These are available today, that's right. exactly right. Yeah. All right, awesome. Well, it sounds like, uh, so, you know, for an out of date digital guy like myself, this sounds like uh, almost too good to be true. I don't know anything about RF, I don't want to do any programming, and I certainly don't want to do any compliance uh, cer certification filing. Um, so this wraps it all, all up in this one module. You're exactly right on that okay. one. Yeah, there shouldn't be any hurdles in adding Bluetooth, and now with this module, there aren't. Outstanding. Yep. All right, well, thank you so much for thank that you. overview. Let's go to Aaliyah and see if there are any questions uh, from the audience today. Um, we do have a few questions for you, Eric. Um, and the first one is that we got from our email is, what Bluetooth products do you offer for clients looking for more flexibility in firmware and hardware design? Sure, yeah, um, we do have uh, another RF ready module that allows you to write your own firmware if you needed more flexibility in controlling the firmware and devices like that. And then on the SOC side, chip downside, we offer the chip as well. So these are WBZ451 modules or PIC32CXBZ2 SOCs that uh, we already have out there you can order today. Thank you. And another question I have for you that we got from my email is, are the commands similar um, or compatible to the older RN products? Yes. 
if you are familiar with the older microchip RM products, uh, this new one fits right there. Uh, we have added a few more commands to include the newer Bluetooth profiles, but they are very similar to the last gen uh, RM products that we have offered in the past. Thank you. Um, another question for you is, is there a demo mobile app and source code? We, yeah, uh, that's a good question. And we do have a mobile app for both iOS and Android that you can download for free, as well as the source code. The source code is also free. So if you want to just try it out, you can download and try it. Or if you want to make it your own, that's a good starting point for you to uh, start with. Awesome. Um, let's see. Another question I have is, does this support over-the-air updates? Uh, short answer, yes. <laughs> yeah, it does. OK. And um, let's see. We do have a few more questions for, me, for you. Um, what is the max transmit power of the module? Um, so this one does. Uh, positive 12 dBm as the max transmit power. So that gives you a very long range. I think we have tested over 200 meters, but it depends on the use case. But yeah. Great. And um, let's see. Um, what is the Bluetooth range? Yeah, uh, like I said, it's we have tested around 200, over 200 meters in a straight line, line of sight uh, scenario. Depending on sort of the enclosure that you put the uh, module in, uh, it could vary a lot, but uh, it supports the long range phi. So uh, because of that, you have really long range. Um, looks like we don't have any more questions. Um, but if you do have um, any additional questions or comments, you can email us at livestreamamicrochip.com. And don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe to our social media platforms. Back to you, Eric. All right. Thanks, Aaliyah. Thank you, Shashir. Thanks for spending some time with us today and uh, educating us on the Bluetooth module. Thank you. My Thank pleasure. you to our audience for taking some time out of your day to listen in. Please visit us at microchip.com slash coffee break. There you can see our future schedules. You can sign up for notifications and you can peruse our previously recorded sessions. So check that out, and we hope to see you next time. Thanks.